One deal is all it takes. You see, sometimes all it takes is one deal to dramatically impact your life financially, professionally, and personally. And in today's video, I'm going to share with you one such deal of a student of ours named Jacob. So let's get started. Okay. So Jacob has been a student of ours about a year. He's a waiter for, for five years at a very high-end restaurant. The property that he purchased was a 90-unit property that was slightly uh, distressed, and it was next door to LSU, Louisiana State University. So a great location, okay? LSU, go Tigers, all right? Number two, it was purchased uh, under market, so it was priced under market, which is a good thing. Number three, the rent upside was about $300 per unit. Now that is huge, right? That means uh, out of the 90 units, basically all of them can go from this level of rent to that level, $300 more. And as you know, as you raise the rent, you raise the NOI, uh, the property value goes up, but also gives you way many other options like a cash out refi, which we'll talk about in a second. All right. And uh, number four, uh, probably the, the most powerful thing here in being creative and what we teach here is there was no money out of Jacob's pocket, right? Incredible. So this was a 100% finance deal. And I know what you're thinking. This guy is over leveraged. Peter, you always teach don't do 100% finance deals. But in this case, we made an exception. And the reason why is when we look at the numbers, okay, his debt coverage ratio, look it up, debt coverage ratio, Debt coverage ratio is 1.26. That means that his net operating income, okay, after he collects all the income and pays all the bills, uh, what's left over to pay the mortgage is 1.26 times. That means there was plenty of cash flow uh, left over afterwards, right? So plenty of cash flow in this deal. Very, very solid deal. Uh, number five, Jacob was just one month from financial freedom. We'll talk about that in the video too. All right, but you probably want to know how did Jacob do this, right? 24 year old young man, just graduated college, a waiter for five years. How did he do this? That's what today's video is about. And then which leads us to a very uh, huge announcement from Jacob, which he will announce in the middle of the video. It's going to blow you away. All right, so let's get started. Without further ado, I want to introduce to you Jacob. Let's go there next. And then after the interview, I will come back and share with you how to put yourself in Jacob's shoes and try to do what he did. All right. All right. Let's go to the video next. Good morning, everyone. This is Peter. And uh, I have a surprise for you today. And I want to introduce an outstanding young man by the name of Jacob. Uh, this morning, one of our students who came in as a wholesaler, but he has a he has a surprise to share with you about what he purchased and also two additional surprises that are completely life-changing. So welcome and good morning uh, this morning, Jacob. Good morning, Peter. How are you? I'm doing great, doing great. Hey, thanks for joining us today. I know it's uh, early where you are. We really appreciate you taking your time uh, out of your day. Yesterday was your birthday, right? It was. Yes, right. sir, it was. You turned 24. 24 yesterday. Oh, man. All right. That is awesome. That is awesome. Uh, LSU fan. Big, big LSU fan. All right. Yep. Local boy, local Louisiana boy. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So we'll jump right into it, Jacob. Could you share with us a little bit about yourself? Yes. So um, I currently work at a high-end restaurant here in Louisiana and uh, been doing that for about five and a half years now. Uh, did that all throughout college. Um, it's paid most of my way through it, but... Uh, Realized that's not the career path I exactly wanted to pursue the rest of my life. Um, I always had an interest in real estate investing, and I pursued that since I was about 16 years old. Um, I wanted to start small, so my first investment was actually one and a half years ago. It was a single family house, um, and I've invested a lot of time and energy into that baby for just a small amount of profits, mm. you know, and realized that the single family house was not exactly the route that I wanted to pursue, was not um, in line with the goals I was trying to achieve um, in real estate. So 
that is definitely one of the reasons why I started investing a lot of my time into commercial and wanted to uh, pursue that route. Great, great, great. And um, uh, you also have uh, some other, another, maybe a possible powerful why we discussed. What is that? Yes. So I'd have to say my why um, or a couple of reasons why I decided to choose commercial real estate was one, as I explained, um, realized the profit margins of single family residences would not uh, get me to where I wanted to be in life. Two was also I grew up um, modestly uh, by all means, but my parents did struggle financially for quite some time um, in trying to give me and my sister the best life possible. Um, but I did see the wedge that it drove between my parents constantly bickering about finances. And I made a promise to myself that um, while seeing how hard marriage is, um, I wasn't going to allow finances to be one of those mm. problems. Mm. Yep. Yep. That's great. That's great. And, uh, and this morning too, we shared about, uh, your, I'm, I'm big into routines, morning routines, and you have yours. Can you, can you share with me what your morning routine is to get the day started? I do. Uh, so for as long as I can remember, um, my routine in, um, my day was beginning the day with a workout, uh, getting my body um, wake first. And then I would go to church every day at nine o'clock, um, would always get me right mentally, keep me grounded, focused. Um, uh, even though I'm pursuing a career path that uh, can be very rewarding, trying to always remember to give him the uh, glory mm -hmm. first mm -hmm. for myself right. was a big priority for me. And then after church, that's when I would start doing all my homework and research in real estate. And then at about four o'clock is when I would go to work at the restaurant. So a very scheduled um, routine that, yes, it felt uh, very mundane, but um, that's what made me happy and helped me get to where I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. Great, great. That's a perfect segue to discuss where you're at now. And uh, so uh, you close uh, on a 90 unit apartment building. And, uh, and let's not forget, you came into our program as a wholesaler, right? I did. Not having a, a bunch of money. So you had to wholesale. Your plan was to wholesale a few deals to build up your own savings yep. and then go out and do your own deals. But it didn't work out that way. <laughs> that's correct. That's, that's a correct. All right. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah, please share with us your 90 unit uh, deal that you put no money in, but now you are a third owner. So please share. We all want to hear this. Okay, so uh, I started in your program about one year ago. This was January of last year. And like you mentioned, I started out in the wholesale program, um, was doing all my homework on how to find property, um, how to go about the wholesaling processes. Um, and when it came time to actually pursue your marketing strategies to property owners, I was getting a vast number of responses and, uh, two of which are my current business partners and the previous property owner of the 90 unit apartment complex. Um, and so my business partners um, mentioned that they were not interested in selling the property that I had marketed out to, but they were very interested in me personally. They were impressed with the marketing for one, um, and how well it was performed on them. Uh, and they knew that I can, I'm clearly marketing to other properties as well. And I'm probably getting a success in that if it worked for them. So they wanted to meet me, wanted to see what I was doing. And when they found out that I was communicating with the owner of this 90 unit and was very close to contract with him, um, they asked if I would want to partner with them. And so that's when I asked you, Peter, if that would even be a good idea. Uh, me and my young mind, um, thought that I wanted the property for myself 
And that's when you reminded me, you know, stay humble. You're just starting out. You know, you're still learning a lot. Um, while I have you as a mentor, it is also good to bring experts into the deal if um, that's the case. And it's better to have a piece of a profitable deal than all of a negative deal. And so I remember you telling me that. And so that stuck with me. So I decided to partner with these two guys who have a whole lot of experience um, in the Baton Rouge area. And um, that's what kind of gets me going with how I communicated with the seller. So at first, before the partners came on, I was negotiating a deal of 3.7 purchase price with the seller and a down payment of about 8% um, at 300,000. Well, when my partners came around, they said, Jacob, I believe from everything we did in our due diligence, we can um, give this owner a better proposal and for ourselves, a way better deal. So that's when they um, came in and helped me negotiate with the seller to a purchase price of 3.6, um, down payment of zero, the seller carrying an owner carry second mortgage of two million. And then we pursued a conventional loan from a bank out of California for 1.6 for the other 1.6. We found out the seller only owed 1.26 on his current mortgage. And so that's when we decided to pursue the full 1.6 as the negotiating tactic to still giving him a portion of down payment from the difference of 1.6 and 1.2, but also giving ourselves 100,000 out of that portion for renovation cost. So about 200,000, a little bit more than that was going to the seller for his down payment and about 100,000 going to us for renovation cost. So we actually got paid to purchase this property. Stop, hold it right there, time out. This deserves for me to explain to you exactly what happened. This is so crucial to this deal, right? Purchase price, 3.6 million. The down payment was zero, right? So Jacob and his team had no out of pocket uh, 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 you know, other than closing costs to this seller, okay? The seller is gonna carry a second mortgage in the order of $2 million. Okay, so 2 million, 3.6 minus 2 million, right, equals 1.6. They got a bank loan for 1.6 because the seller uh, owed uh, the, the uh, 1.6. But they found out that the seller only owed 1.26, right? So there's a $340,000 gap there, right, of, of quote unquote extra money, extra loan dollars. What do you do with it? Well, they decided out of that $340,000 to give. 240 to the seller and pay themselves a hundred thousand dollars as cash at closing all right amazing right all right so i don't want to hold you up any further let's go back to the interview excellent so so basically 3.6 purchase price uh two million dollar uh seller carry second for five years yep. right for five years for yep. five years and then you went ahead and and uh uh was able to obtain a loan from a California bank here, and then um, and then you were able to uh, pay off the seller uh, mortgage, give him a little extra, and then you, at closing you were able to get yourself and your partners a hundred thousand dollars to to jumpstart your renovations on the property. That's correct. That's excellent. <laughs> awesome, awesome. All right, please continue. This gets this gets even better. Absolutely. So um, it was already performing very well, um, but we did notice a lot of deferred maintenance. So the owner um, lives about two hours away from the property and realized that he was not going very often. Uh, he had a lot of trust in his property manager that was living on site um, while we found out that there was very poor bookkeeping. Mm -hmm. And so the property manager we found out was collecting a lot of cash. Um, not many documentation was happening there. So um, his numbers were skewed. Um, 
and um, doing our due diligence, we were finding out um, property manager probably wasn't telling him all everything that was being collected. Mm. So uh, that's when uh, we took that into consideration and decided that we should really pursue this deal because uh, the bookkeeping was, that was a sign that you always taught us in your program was a big sign of a mom and pop um, negotiating tactic was poor maintenance and poor bookkeeping. So um, even with the poor bookkeeping that the property manager was giving the owner, it was still cash flowing. And so we were amazed by that. Not only that, but the rents were under market, I'd say uh, close to $300. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yes. So mm -hmm. it's, it was just amazed us how the owner, um, we just found out he just really wants to retire. Yeah. You no. Know? And so that was a big thing for us is we wanted to provide that for him. And so we negotiated to give the previous owner um, a big check every month, uh, interest only for the first year, and then a little more than he was collecting in cash flow while even still um, getting this building where we want it would still provide us ample cash flow to collect ourselves. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, Jacob, uh, the average person would think that, okay, this is a 100% finance deal. And a lot of times that's, some will say that this is over leveraged. And, but in this case, uh, the price was right, right? The, 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 the loan terms are right. And then the cash flow was also outstanding, but even low. I, when I looked at your performer early on, when you put the deal into our system, I couldn't believe the upside in this deal. It's yeah. a head scratcher. <laughs> okay, go verify this. This is like too good to be true. Yeah. Uh, but having, um, you know, $300 a unit upside on 90 units, right? And you bought it at 3.6, right? And we found out that was way under market for what everything was going for yeah. already. Yeah. So we purchased under market value. Yeah. So what is the after repair value? So all, all said and done, you and your partners get to stable, you know, get the rents up, stabilize it, make it pretty, right? What is, what is the after repair value approximately? So right now um, we're calculating that the property is going to be about 7 million wow. after repair value. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. All right. Okay. Uh, and you have, and you, you are literally one third owner of this property. One third owner. One third um, owner. And our exit strategy um, is to cash out refinance in about one year's time. Um, we're almost done with renovations now. And um, after we get everything stabilized at the new market rents, um, like we said, we believe that at refinance in about one year, we can get it to 7 million. Um, and after that, just hold it for long term. Mm -hmm. So that's great. That is great. All right, so that's the extra strategy to do a cash out refi, pull out the money, right? Yeah. You put into the property, pay yourself handsomely, right? Yep. Yep. And then hold the property long term for cash flow. That's correct. And then um, we are talking about pouring some of that um, cash out refinance into another deal. Okay, great, great, great. Yes. All right. That's awesome. That's awesome. And uh, so just a along the way in this transaction, uh, any any challenges that you had you want to share with anyone? Yeah. Um, so we at first not knowing the information of the property manager um, collecting all cash, we did decide at first to keep her on after mm -hmm. we bought the property um, and see how she performed. Well, after we officially bought the property was when we started finding out that information. Mm -hmm. And so we had to fire the property manager and um, we've been doing a lot of the work ourselves, even though we have contractors for the maintenance of the property. Um, we are dealing with a lot of the tenant relations and transitioning of new, new clientele. And so um, I'm getting a lot of hands-on experience on what property managers mm -hmm. deal with right now and uh, how angry 
some people can get mm-hmm. when they find out that they're losing their homes because uh, she didn't do any screening in the past. Mm. So no screening was done on who was in there. And so um, that's one thing we came in and do. We did a new screening process. Um, a higher income had to be verified for you to live at the property, a uh, criminal background, uh, previous evictions. And so um, that on top of staying on top of our contractors, um, I'm learning a lot. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. So is that your, your, your role uh, in the partnership? Uh, it, it's uh, a- I'd have to say the role that um, right now, that is the case. Um, and so um, we just acquired Appfolio as our online software that we are going to pursue um, in this deal and in future deals as far as keeping everything documented um, and the overall success of the business. Everything is very structured in that platform, and um, we're excited to transition into that. It's taking a while to upload everything onto that software, Mm -hmm. but it's getting there. Mm -hmm. And um, they see my role in the partnership eventually going back to acquisition. Mm -hmm. That's something that through your program, I've gotten very good at. Uh, That's something you are very good at teaching your protégés is – for one, your marketing strategies on how successful those were, um, gotten good at that as well as talking to the seller. So that's the role they eventually see me doing is growing the business um, and finding more deals. That's great. <clears throat> Glad you mentioned that. Uh, you know, I, I believe some that are listening are going to you know how see, are going to see how young you are. And how you were able to, uh, at your age, talk with a, you know, a, a, a commercial property owner, right, and develop their relationship. And uh, tell us what, what that was like. Yeah, so I uh, have to admit, it was a little nerve wracking at first, um, talking to um, a lot of these grown adults um, about <laughs> million dollar properties um, and how... Um, a young adult as myself would be able to purchase from them. But um, that's something that through your program, I was able to learn. Um, It's, it's a lot easier than I anticipated because it's not about um, the numbers as much as it is a personal relationship with these owners, getting to know them, getting to know their motivations um, and what makes them uh, happy at the end of the day. And that's something that I was able to really get information from these owners on what made them, what made them tick. Mm -hmm. And so what made them happy. And that's how I pursued this seller was I tried finding out what he was looking for while selling his property. What, why did he want to sell his property? And so when I found out he was just really burnt out, in the business and wanted to retire with his wife and go travel. That's something that um, we found a negotiating tactic in providing him an income while being able to travel at his own leisure. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we negotiated our deal. Yeah. Yeah. Creating win-wins. Right. And uh, we always, we always teach when we have a willing seller, and a willing buyer, beautiful things can happen. And this was a beautiful thing. Yes, sir. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Great. Now, um, uh, we you, we do have, uh, uh, we, we want you to share two amazing announcements, right? We're going to jump into that. And uh, before we share, you know, what your, what your future in commercial estate looks like. So uh, I just want you to share uh, two very important things, two big announcements right now. Could you? Yes. So um, my first announcement is that I will be quitting uh, my job officially as of April 1 uh, of this year. Um, Like I said, I've been working um, in a a traditional job for five and a half years now. And I always knew that was not um, 
aligned and where I wanted to be in life. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. the fact that my very first commercial deal can provide um, the financial freedom that I was looking for is a blessing that not many people can say that they have. So I'll uh, be job free in about one month. All right. And this one commercial deal provides way more than your than than your uh, your wait your job as a waiter. Way more. Absolutely. <laughs> Even after um, the partner split, um, it's still way above what I would be making. So uh, very blessed. Awesome. Awesome. Blessed. And, let, and let's do it right. That should be almost be tax free. You get all the right offs there. That's correct. Yeah, I'm learning a lot about the, the yeah, tax yeah. Uh, loopholes real estate provides as well throughout all this right. process. Okay. All right. Okay. Now that we have that out the way, let's hear probably the, the more important thing. So um, I've been dating uh, the girl of my dreams for about uh, four years now. And I uh, told myself as soon as I get my first apartment building was when I was proposing. So actually, as of last week, I proposed to my girlfriend of four years and uh, excited to marry her. All right. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. And uh, when is the wedding day? It's November of this year. All right. Congratulations. All right. (laughs) Congratulations. All right. Okay. Awesome. Thanks for sharing those two amazing things. Uh, So uh, uh, maybe we can just kind of end with this. Um, What is, what are, you, what are your future plans? You, you're going to stick with the guys that you have as your partner. You're going to, you're going to do more acquisitions together. So sh- share with us more. What, what's the future look like for Jacob? Yes. Yeah, so um, I built up a lot of trust with these two um, very experienced investors that I partnered with. And um, they took me on to their business, uh, made me a third, a third owner of their business as well. And uh, that's what I'll be doing is acquisitions finding more deals and um, just growing the business, Um, not necessarily working in it, but just constantly scaling and um, hopefully achieving um, the goals that I want to achieve in a very short amount of time through learning your methods. Um, I believe I can do that in about 10 years. All right. All right. In in 10 years, what would you like to be? You'll be 34, Um, be 34 years old then. So where would you like to be? I'd like to be, I'd like to be traveling. That, mm. That's my ultimate mm. dream with, with my future wife uh, and family is to travel. And so um, I believe in 10 years, I'll be able to do that financially free. All right. Um, and be retired officially. All right. At 34. 34. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds familiar. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. That's great. That's great. All right. Well, Jacob, I won't keep any longer. Now, today is a work day for you. So I really appreciate you uh, joining us today. Very inspiring story. And I'm sure it's going to really help others out there see that they can do what you can do. Do you have any, uh, do you have any parting words for them? Anything you want to share with them to encourage them? Yes, I just have to say um, that I would highly recommend a very scheduled lifestyle Hmm. Um, for that was one thing that helped me stay on track, um, for commercial real estate. There's a lot, a lot to learn. And I'm by all means, not even close to learning everything there is to know. Um, I'm learning new things every day, but with you having a set schedule every day, um, and this is my personal belief with you having God at the forefront, I believe anything's possible. Um, giving him the glory and not letting your pride get in the way is also a big, big thing that helped me get this far. So that would have to be my piece of advice right there. All right. We appreciate it. All right, Jacob. Hey, thank you so much. This has been great. Uh, We'll be talking soon. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you, Peter. All right. Welcome back. Wasn't Jacob an incredible young man? He sure is. Right. So let's encourage him. Go ahead and like this video. So he can share with his parents, share with his friends, uh, show his fiance of how proud we are, uh, we all are of, of Jacob. All right, so do him a favor, like the video, tell him, type in the words, uh, congrats in the comments, do whatever you have to do to commend and uh, encourage this young man. All right, okay, so what I'm gonna do in this video here 
is what I want to do is do uh, top three takeaways and then top three dual metrics to kind of wrap up this video to help you get in the same position uh, as, as Jacob. Okay, all right, so let's start off with um, uh, the top three takeaways. Number one is Jacob had a powerful why, okay? When Jacob came into our program uh, last year, uh, I, I, I won't forget this, he mentioned to me that one of, it, one of the reasons why he wanted to purchase commercial is because uh, this is just one of the reasons, but it's very powerful, is that his parents would, uh, would oftentimes fight over money. And it pained him, pained him in his heart. You can see how a, how a great kid he is, right? Pained him in his heart. So he wanted to do something, make sure that he wouldn't have to fight over money with his future wife, but his parents wouldn't have money problems as well. All right? So he is well on his way. So pain, pain is a powerful, is a, pain is a great motivator. So my question to you is, what pains you, right? What pains you to want to do commercial estate investing? So what is, what is uh, burdening your heart where you need finances like, like what commercial can do for you to help you solve that problem? So what, what's your pain, right? Number two, uh, Jacob had a winning routine. I am uh, big on routines, as you guys know. I do the same thing for many, many years, and, and Jacob has a similar routine. I call it a winning daily routine, right? And there's a quote here, not by me, but by a famous motivator, and it says, routine in an intelligent person is a sign for ambition. You can see that all over Jacob, right? Okay, uh, top takeaway number three is um, Jacob executed the three pillars of our program, what we do for our students. Number one is we give them training, right? We give, we, we show Jacob how to market off-market deals, right? Number three, coaching. So those are the three pillars that must happen. You must be trained, you must know how to market, and you have to get coaching. So it would, Jacob was textbook. I wrote down, he was just textbook. He was great to work with, all right? Okay, those are the top three takeaways. Now let's talk about the top three deal metrics, okay? Number one, um, this um, the deal's cash flow, uh, just for Jacob's one-third share, it's about $100,000 per year. It's actually more, being conservative here. This allows him to leave his job, okay? On April 1st, he's on his way, right? Number two, uh, there, you mentioned part of his extra strategy was to do a cash out refi after a year and then put it into a long-term financing with low interest rate and hold the property for a while. Well, uh, they're not gonna pull out all the equity, but they're gonna pull out enough for Jacob to pocket between two hundred fifty and three hundred thousand dollars, just himself for his one third share, right? Uh, again, uh, sometimes one deal is all it takes. Okay, all right. And then number three, the after repair value of the property is seven million dollars. Okay, now that is not sometime in the future. That is today. Okay, if any of you are are familiar with uh, with with this area of Baton Rouge. There, he's buying it. Uh, he's buying it for three point six million, which is about forty thousand dollars per unit. Today, there are properties that are going for between seventy and ninety thousand dollars per unit, okay, or more. So we're, you know, in a few years, this is probably a conservative number. All right. So uh, it is. So his value for seven million dollars is supported today by current sales comparables. So this is a solid number. A great deal. Again, sometimes all it takes is one deal. All right. Thanks, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, pr please press the like button. Get onto our website, commercialpropertyadvisors.com, or just uh, subscribe to this YouTube channel to get more videos like this. Thank you again, everyone. Have a great day, and I'll see you at the next video.